How's it going, guys? So I was thinking about not even talking about this originally because I was like, you know, I'm always coming on here, always bashing AEW. I'm like, people already know probably like what I'm going to say ahead of time. And maybe I might surprise a few people by saying this, you know, because everyone is going to come in the comments and say I'm being a negative Nancy. I'm being pro WWE despite doing SmackDown and pay-per-view reviews where I'm constantly, you know, critiquing the WWE and all that. And uh, this all-out pay-per-view, though, I, I just couldn't avoid making a video on it because if you guys didn't overhype it, to the level that you're overhyping it i would probably just not even make this video i would just keep working on the wwe 2k19 retrospective that i'm working on and some other video game related stuff uh but i decided sidebar it's time to talk about this because it, it's completely outrageous just the overhype i mean i just don't understand how you guys talking not so much to my subscribers some of my subscribers are AEW fans and if you like it that's great i don't have an ill opinion about you just because you enjoy a show if you enjoy a show go ahead and enjoy if you liked all out good for you i'm happy you enjoyed it i wish i could enjoy things like that that you know are not good <laughs> but uh anyway there was a lot of appearances on here. We had Daniel Bryan, Adam Cole, Ruby Soho, which who was Ruby Riot in WWE, and some Japanese wrestler who I don't even know the name of. Uh, you know, whatever his name is, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name. Uh, but uh, these are all WWE talents, and everyone's making a big deal, and everyone knows what a big fan of Daniel Bryan I am. Uh, Adam Cole, not so much. Uh, but, you know, Daniel Bryan, I mean, you could go back and look at my catalog of videos here on YouTube. I have strongly supported this man's career. I've purchased merchandise for the guy. But I'm not going to come here on YouTube and lie and say that the guy moved the needle because the fact of the matter is he never did there's no proof of him ever getting the needle up, even during WrestleMania 30. You know, when he was there, that's when things started going downhill. And the same thing goes for CM Punk, who we're going to talk about in a moment. And you know what? We'll start right there, because that actually came first. We had CM Punk and uh, Darby Allen, And I actually watched this match. This was the only full match that i watched on the show just in case you're wondering why you're not getting a full all-out reviews because i'm not watching three hours of this so i watch key moments and that's about it so i watched this one from start to finish and punk and allen it was okay it wasn't bad but you know the fact that people are saying this was great and this is amazing and you know, I watch it right here on YouTube, and I'm looking at the comments, and people are saying, this is wrestling, this is great. First of all, this match was felt very disjointed. There was nothing, like, overly bad about it, but there was nothing overly great or even great about it. It was a very slow-paced match. You could clearly see that Punk is, like, wrestling at half the speed, and it might be due to him being out of the ring for so long but he also did mma training so you would think that maybe you know he'd be in better shape and you know i'm looking at like the shape that he's in he's not really in the best shape here especially for a guy that trained in mma i'm kind of looking at the guy and you know the muscle tone is all gone from him he kind of just looks you know not horrible but he looks amazingly average <laughs> so and darby allen i'm looking at this guy in there and i'm saying just what do you people see in this guy i mean you know i might give finn balor some shit but at least the guy 
you know, he, he, he at least looks like an athlete. He might not be my idea of an athlete, but at least... Finn Balor is like twice the size of Darby Allen. And when he paints his face, you could start to take the guy a little bit seriously. Here you just really just have, like I said, you, you've got a Misfits reject. Misfits, for anyone who doesn't get that reference, I made it before in the past in the CM Punk videos that I did. That is a, a punk band, a classic punk band. If you people have never heard of it, then you know go look it up. But that's exactly what this guy looks like. And he also looks like he's copying the appearance of vampiro and inspiration is a sincerest form of flattery i know i know you know but anyway that's not the point but this match you look at the spots and how it was put together there was no energy and the crowd was completely out of it i i, I mean really except for the finish which you know the crowd should always you know be their hottest for i guess there was really nothing here for the way this match was built up and it being this big return. And of course, me being the realist, not to toot my own horn, but I was the one coming on here saying that this is not a good return here. This is not a good place to start for a match. Darby Allen. And, you know, I'm also taking a look at what I'm seeing here on this show. And we're talking about, you know, the WWE and all these stars from the past coming in, like Brock Lesnar and Goldberg, and stealing the spotlight from the from the younger talent. And meanwhile, I'm watching CM Punk pinning the brightest star, brightest star in this promotion. I'm also seeing Paul White Big Show squashing QT Marshall. And I'm also seeing Chris Jericho go over the top heel in MJF. So where are the arguments there? So anyway, the CM Punk thing, not bad, but very underwhelming and not such a great match. I mean, the fact that I'm looking at, you know, out of curiosity, I looked at what Wade Keller gave this match and I'm like, he gave it three and a half stars. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me for that match? You know, I think back to, like, WWE matches that he probably gave. You know, when I was younger, I'd, I would look at Wade Keller's stuff, and he used to give lower scores to certain matches. Like, I remember one thing just it always stuck in my mind. They had this great hardcore match on SmackDown with Chris Benoit and Randy Orton, and they gave this match... He, he gave this match, like... um. He, he gave it like one and a half stars or something like that. Something completely ridiculous. And to think back, like, here we are in 2021, and he's giving a match like this three and a half stars. Like, you know, I used to do star ratings on here when I would rate pay-per-views. And if I was still doing that, and if I really had to, like, give this match a, a rating... I'd give it maybe like two and a half stars, maybe, if even that. I, I mean, it was just kind of subpar, really. There wasn't a lot to speak of here. You, you got Ruby Soho comes in here, and, you know, forget about all these other girls in the women's division. She gets the number one contendership in the Casino Battle Royal. You, you know, forget about, uh, fuck all these AEW women we've been building up for months, for years Hey, you know, get them out of the way. Make way for Miss WWE. I mean, you know, do they not see that? That this is like them promoting WWE stars after Tony Khan and Jericho said they're not going to be about uh, hiring past WWE stars. And the question I need to ask here is, if they're not about hiring WWE stars and they're not like TNA and, and all that, like, wh what about... You know, they're going to use these wrestlers better because that's the argument. Well, we're going to take all these stars and make them better. You know, uh, seriously, like, you, what happened with Andrade? Weren't you going to do it with him? John Moxley is like an afterthought. You know, he's in Japan half the time. That's the reason why they let him go to Japan because it's like, uh, we don't really have anything for you here in the States. You might as well go over there and do something. I mean, and, and countless other talents, like, what are they doing, example, like, with Matt Hardy? They got that guy in there. They, you know, said, oh, you know, they're, and, and I was like, okay. And he's coming in there. They were taking advantage of the broken universe character. Or like, oh, I'm like, okay, so they might do this justice here. 
Then they, you know, they, the guy almost gets killed in a match, basically. And now he's doing some money gimmick, which is going nowhere. And, you know, Miro, you know, I had him doing some really foolish stuff. And the funny thing was, that guy was in a wedding in WWE. And everyone said, oh, this is what they're doing with him. And then he ended up in another wedding in AEW. And no one said shit about it. Because if AEW does it, it's all fine and well. So you see all these these repeats. It's WWE stars just being hired by AEW just to fill roster spots. And the guys that they have, they're not even doing anything. They said they're going to elevate these people. I don't see them really elevating to anything. It's only a matter of time before they get tired of Ruby Soho. And uh, well, we're going to move on here to Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan. So you had your main event with Kenny Omega and Christian Cage, which I did not watch. I just watched the finish for the returns. So out comes Adam Cole because the baby faces are getting beat down. Uh, Jungle Boy and all those other, you know, uh, I don't know if Marco Stunt was out there. I couldn't really tell. Uh, but you also had... Um, uh, what's his name the um the 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 t-rex guy he was out there too and uh you had a bunch of run-ins here so out comes adam cole and it's adam cole to save the day He's try to save christian and the jurassic express um so he comes out adam cole and we think oh it's baby face adam cole and then he does a, a really sloppy looking super kick to um uh, to Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy goes down. And th that kick was like a mile away from his face. And like JR, you could tell, so bored out of his mind. That you see this guy when he's with Conrad Thompson. And they're reviewing old WWE stuff. He's ten times more enthusiastic than he is on air. It's so obvious that he's collecting a paycheck. And I'm happy for him. Because JR is my favorite announcer of all time. And like I said, with anyone else on this roster, if they're making money, take advantage of Tony Khan and his, you know, stupidity of writing blank checks to wrestlers and get all the money you can, JR. And, and I hear that he's going to be stepping down from commentary anyway. Uh, you know, this guy, obviously, he is a WWE commentator through and through. He's been there for some of the biggest moments of all time. His voice is etched in time. And, you know, I kind of look at him in AEW and I'm like, this is not home for JR. JR is in this, you know, this outlaw fed is, you know, I don't like to quote J uh, Jim Cornette too much, but, you know, he has some funny lines that that psychopath, but this is an outlaw, you know, fed and JR shouldn't be here. He should be in the elite home. Yep. There. Just by me saying that every everything else I said or did here on YouTube will now cement me as a WWE fanboy. But the case of the matter is just that. There's so much history in the WWE, and that's JR's home. So I know eventually JR will come back home. Um but this is not a good look. So, like, yeah, so so the big uh the big swerve, JR can't even sell it because it's just so half-assed and no one cares. Like, seriously, like, who cares about Adam Cole doing this swerve? Does it really matter? Do, does anyone give a shit? Like, first of all, Adam Cole comes out and he does this kick. And is there any reason why we would want him to, to join up with Christian Cage in the Jurassic Express? Anyway, uh... The, Daniel Bryan comes out to make the save because then they start beating down on the on the baby faces and Daniel Bryan's out there to kind of counterbalance and you know I'm just kind of like okay it's the same thing with JR again and even Tony Schiavone and Excalibur that that masked goof there's no enthusiasm like they can't even get excited for their own product it's really that lousy. So basically, Daniel Bryan comes in and, you know, they, they fend off the heels and all is right with the world. And that's just wonderful. It's like, was this return, was really any of this that exciting? I mean, are we really marking out for Ruby Soho? 
Did anyone care about her when she was in WWE? I'm going to answer that question. No. I didn't see a single person say, should Ruby Riot be used better by WWE? I mean, when I looked at her in WWE, I thought she was in the right spot. Like, she shouldn't be elevated. They shouldn't bring her down. I mean, she was a decent wrestler, I guess, you know? But, like, the fact that we're treating her like like royalty here wrestling royalty and the same thing goes for like adam cole and daniel bryan people are legitimately talking like this is a revolution like this is a gigantic uh amazing thing and cm punk goes on record saying to 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 fuck uh all the haters and that this this right here what you're seeing with with cm punk adam cole and daniel bryan this, he compared this to the outsiders, to the formation of the NWO. He's comparing this to to Kevin Nash and Scott Hall coming in to join up with Hulk Hogan. Do, do you guys, do you, do you, if, like I said, Daniel Bryan fan and a CM Punk fan. But I, <laughs> when I would have to like rank my favorites, I guarantee you that Hulk Hogan is nowhere near any of these guys if I ever had to do a, a list of favorite wrestlers. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, that is beyond cringy. And the reactions to this entire show were completely cringy. I mean, get a grip. Saying this was one of the greatest wrestling shows of all time. I see people saying this. I mean, you could pick any random WrestleMania, even this year's WrestleMania, and it was better. I mean, honestly, I, I mean, just I'm looking at the card and I'm saying it looked like a better card and the eventfulness just I don't I don't have to sit through matches. I'm not talking about match quality, but I'm talking about eventfulness stuff happening. I mean, who cares if Daniel Bryan walked out on an AEW show? Did people mark out this much when Mr. Kennedy or Rob Van Dam showed up in TNA? No, I don't remember that. It's just these AEW fans are more... <laughs> they're more psychopathic is what it is. They're more obsessive. I mean, just really, honestly, do that comparison. And, and, and what I just named right there, like Rob Van Dam is a bigger star than Daniel Bryan. Rob Van Dam was, uh, you know, at one time a bigger star than CM Punk. He was there when the ratings were actually better. So I, I just, I don't see what this this massive, uh, like unexplainable just obsession is with this promotion and wanting it to be better than WWE and people mocking WWE fans and people who don't give a shit like me you know, oh, oh, Tony Khan's catching up to Vince McMahon. Do I give a shit? I mean, it's not going to happen because the same wrestlers who were in WWE showed up in AEW. The same wrestlers that didn't do a damn thing for the ratings. They're going to change the landscape of WWE. And like, what landscape? This non-existent landscape where people don't give a shit about wrestling. Like, does that ever strike anybody that this stuff is not popular anymore and that the normal population does not care? That they do not give a fuck about this happening? That normal people on the street, if you approach them, hey, 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 Daniel Bryan debut last night. Who? Like, honestly, Darby Allin and, and CM Punk, they had a great match. Does anyone even know these people? Uh, no <laughs> like so what's the deal anyway guys i could go on forever about this but you gotta stop somewhere so let me know what you thought down in the comments did you watch all out or did you just watch the highlights like i did did you think it was as you know overhyped as i did or did you think that it deserved the hype let me know in the comments down below no hate no judging you know what i mean uh just honest opinions here like we always do here on this channel. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you get all notifications when I post all my new videos. I want to thank all my patrons for your continued support. And thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.